Hey friends, if you don't know me, I'm Andy Burns. I'm the pastor of Church of the Savior. And this is the sermon that I prepped for uh, January 17th, 2021. Uh, so if you weren't if you weren't able to join us in Zoom worship this morning, um, or if you just wanted to see where we've been, this is for you. So let me start by reading the passage that we're going to focus on today. It's John chapter 21, the Gospel of John chapter 21, verses 43 to 51. So hear this story about Jesus. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the Law and the Prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son, from Nazareth. Nathanael responded, Can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said about him, Here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven open and God's angels coming up to heaven and down to earth on the human one. The word of God for the people of God. We said, thanks be to God. Now today, we're just focusing on Nathaniel's question in this passage. Uh, worded in the translation I just read, um, can anything from Nazareth be good? But the more traditional wording of that is, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, when we when we hear that, or at least when I first read that um, for, to prep for this, my uh, our first thought might be to parallel to parallel it with with kind of rivalries today. Um, in Central Ohio, we obviously ask. Uh, can anything good come from Michigan, right? That's the first thing we think of. Um, depending on who your team is, maybe it, it might be, can anything good come from a Yankees fan or a Red Sox fan? Uh, maybe you're you know, thinking back to high school a few years or many years before. Uh, maybe your high school football or basketball team had a really active rivalry with a, with a neighboring school. But Thinking about those kinds of rivalries, we mostly joke about those. We don't take them too seriously. Rivalries, they can get pretty serious and fans get carried away and people can be really serious about holding them. But for the most part, we mostly kind of joke about them. But I think Nathaniel's question points to something deeper than those kind of petty rivalries. And if we spend some time meditating on it, I think it could expose some deeper biases that are hiding in all of us. So the question that I'm inviting us to reflect on throughout our time here, what is our Nazareth? What is your Nazareth? So Nathaniel's prejudice or, or, or bias against Nazareth. This wasn't really about a, a, a rival town or a big city looking down its nose at a small city. Um, I think this exposed some prejudice against Nazareth, Nazareth itself, the Nazarethites themselves. Because um, Nazareth, Jesus' hometown, this was a tiny village in the region of Galilee, village of maybe 500 people, maybe less, economically dependent on Galilee's capital city nearby. They weren't a wealthy city by any means. Um, 
not on any major travel route there, so it was routinely disregarded by the by the people of that region. So Philip says, Philip comes, he says to Nathaniel, we found the one whom Moses wrote about, the law in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. This small village, this poor village, this new prophet, this Messiah that we've been waiting for to, for, to come and, and kick out the Romans and set us free, comes from that backwater town? How can anything good or significant come from this forgotten, poor, teeny little village like that? I mean, let alone the Messiah. And you want me to drop everything and follow that guy? That's the kind of prejudice that I imagine uh, Nathaniel having here. So I ask again, what is our Nazareth? What is your Nazareth? That place or those people that we assume are all bad. Nothing good can come from there or from them. What is our Nazareth? What is your Nazareth? Now, despite that prejudice, Nathaniel still encountered God in a person from over there, from those people, from that side of the tracks, from that run-down, beaten-up little town over there. Nathaniel names Jesus God's son, the King of Israel, and Jesus says, I assure you, that you will see heaven open up and God's angels going up to heaven and down to earth on the human one. In this, Je in this meeting Jesus, a guy, a poor, insignificant Jew from that little town in the middle of nowhere, Nathaniel meets the nexus point between heaven and earth. And I, th I think this, this teaches us something today as stories about Jesus are wont to do. We encounter God in precisely those people and those places that we assume to be all bad. Nothing good can come from there, from those people we think unconsciously often. But it is precisely there and with them and from them that we can encounter God. So our core question, what is our Nazareth? What is your Nazareth? We might just encounter God there. Because the truth is, we all have biases. We all have prejudices against certain kinds of people in certain places. And that doesn't mean that we're bad people. That's It's just an unavoidable part of being human, having these biases and prejudices. Um, because we get messages all the time that we can't avoid, that we can't control, from TV, from movies, from social media, from politicians, from advertisements, from teachers, from parents, from just existing in this society. Messages about what is good and what is bad. To put it simply, I mean, for example, think about standards for, for attractiveness or beauty. We, we see in whatever media we look at what's presented as the ideal human body, wearing ideal clothes with ideal hair. And we often unconsciously, sometimes consciously, but often unconsciously, we try to attain that ideal to make ourselves look that way because that is what's presented as good and normal. So we get this bias against people with physical characteristics or other things about themselves that don't measure up to this ideal and we eat or biased against ourselves when we don't measure up against this. We're all biased in various ways about various kinds of people in various different places. We can't avoid having them. It doesn't mean that we're a bad person because we're biased, because we have these prejudices. We just got to recognize that we have them. 
So that question, can anything good come from Nazareth? Or how it's said in the other translation, um, can anything from Nazareth be good? Implied, can anyone from Nazareth be good? Can anything good come from those people, from that place? We're talking about these hidden biases, these hidden prejudices that we have. And so when we meditate on that question, there, I think there are a couple things that we can't ignore. First, we can't ignore the economic class, the prejudices around economic class that are inherent in, the, in this question. Today, we know that there are just some areas that we know as poor. That's what Nazareth was, at least as far as I can tell. That's what Nazareth was, a poor little village that no one paid attention to. We have those same areas today. And we who come from middle-class suburbs, we tend to unconsciously assume that nothing good can come from those places. For example, across the street from our church building is, uh, is Westerville Estates, the mobile home community. And we who live, again, in the middle-class suburbs, which is a large majority of our church, I think that we can all come to an uncomfortable agreement, if we're honest with ourselves, that there is a bit of prejudice against mobile home communities and the people who live there. Not that we think they're bad people, but we know that there's a lot of our neighbors there living below the poverty line and we have an unconscious prejudice that says, can anything good come from there? Not that the people are bad, just nothing good can come from there. So maybe we need to go there and make them good because we are good and they are not. So I don't think we can ignore the economic class hidden in that question. Can anything good, can anyone good come from there? But also hidden in that question. Something else we can't ignore. Can anything good come from come from there? Or how it's said here again, can anything from Nazareth be good? Hidden in there again is, can anyone from Nazareth be good? Can anything good come from those people? When we think of that, when we bring when we bring that out, I don't I don't think that we can ignore the uh, ignore race when we bring that out in the question. Think here at home, as we think of, of um, those areas that we often think of as poor, nothing good can come from come from there. Some, we might think of rural poverty. We might think of areas of Appalachia where there's a lot of poor white folks, and that's very, very much true. But think of those areas of town that you might tell your kids to avoid, especially in a big city, right? Those, those areas, those neighborhoods that you're going to make sure that your car is locked when you're driving through there. Those areas that you're not about to walk around in. In Columbus, that might be the Hilltop area, North Linden, Franklinton, although there's a lot of gentrifying going on there, so that's kind of changing. But those places, and they have a couple things in common that we, we all know, even if we don't really confront it, a lot of poverty and a lot of people of color, high percentage of a non-white population. We all know this. I'm not saying anything that we don't know, but I think it, it, it exposes some biases of ours against race. Now, when, when we talk about racial biases, I want to say this quickly. When we talk about racial biases in white spaces, we all hear racist. And our defenses come up immediately and, we, and automatically because racist equals bad person. I'm not a racist. I'm not a bad person. So I'm going to shut this conversation down completely. But I'm not calling anyone a racist. I'm not calling anyone a bad person. But I am naming that we all have unconscious biases about people of a different race than us. We who are white 
all have some kind of unconscious bias against people of color. Think of how people of color tend to be portrayed in the media. Again, for example, some of these que some of these messages that we just can't ignore, that we just can't avoid, I should say. Think of how people of color are portrayed in the media. It's getting better now, better representation in the media, and that's a good thing. But think of especially, um, think especially of how they were portrayed in the news when the war on drugs was going strong in the 80s and 90s. Who were the people highlighted as the dangerous criminals, the kingpins, the ones who, were, who need arrested? Who were those people? Overwhelmingly, they were black men. Those communities that needed all of that policing. What did those communities have in common? A lot of people of color. And that's just one example of the messaging that created all of these biases that we all have, me included. I am not separate from all of this. But we have these just because we exist in this society. But we return to Nathaniel and his question, can anything good come from Nazareth? What is our Nazareth? What is your Nazareth? Can anything good come from that place or from those people? We can learn from Nathaniel because he does learn. We encounter God in precisely those places, among those people, that we normally assume, unconsciously, to be all bad. And actually, as followers of Jesus, we follow someone. We follow someone from exactly those kinds of places and those kinds of people. He's one of those kinds of people. And we're called to follow Jesus to those places. Not as white saviors. Not because we're better than those people and those places. And we want to make them more like us and raise them up. Not because of that, but because... Those places and those people as they are. That is where Jesus is to be found. We encounter God in precisely those people in those places that we unconsciously assume to be all bad. Nothing to offer to the world. So we ask again, what is our Nazareth? What is your Nazareth? Where, who, what do we imagine has nothing good to offer? Not that they're morally bad, but just they have nothing good to offer to the world. What are those places that we assume that? We all have them. What are they? Where are they? Who are they? The Sunday I'm recording this for, January 17th, Martin Luther King Jr. Day is tomorrow. Uh, January 18th, 2021, and Dr. King's life was, and all of the leaders of the civil rights movement was spent fighting for exactly those people from those places to get them civil rights, to point to the good that comes out of those communities. Within some of our lifetimes, within some of our lifetimes, not mine, but within some of our lifetimes, um, we can remember legal segregation. When our nation's laws reflected that question, can anything good come from Nazareth for the U.S. at that time in our laws? The question was, can anything good come from communities of color? And the, and the answer from the laws was no, so we have to keep them separate. That was not that long ago. But Dr. King and the, all the leaders in the civil rights movement answered that question with a resounding yes. Yes, there's something good that come, can come from those communities of color. No, there's no reason to separate. No reason to over-police. No reason to do this. And today, the movement for black lives fights for the same thing. 
Because the same question is still implied. Can anything good come from communities of color? And they continue to answer the question with a resounding yes in the face of a society that often answers, usually answers, no, nothing good can come from those communities. Because that, that question, can anything good come from those people in those places, that did not die when segregation was outlawed, which was not that long ago. The question just got hidden. The assumptions behind that just got hidden. But we see that prejudice come out in the open when stuff happens. Like, most recently, Casey Goodson Jr. and Andre Hill being murdered by Franklin County law enforcement within three weeks of each other, I think. Within a very short amount of time. The unconscious mental processes behind that shooting. Nothing good can come from communities of color. These men are obviously criminals, so the cops can shoot them without facing consequences. Now, we, we know that's not right. That's not good. I am sure that we disagree on what should be done about it, if anything should be done about it. But I'm just saying, this is what happens when we just let our Nazareth whatever and whoever and wherever it is, remain unexamined and unvisited when we remain blind to what our Nazareth is. So I think that leaves us with two callings. First, we keep asking, what or who or where is my Nazareth? What are my biases? Who or where am I biased or prejudiced against? Who or where do I assume nothing good can come from there or from them? Maybe it's not like they're morally bad. It's just nothing of value can come from there or from them. Now, there's a great tool for that. Um, and I'm giving you some homework after this for this week or just whenever you're watching this Harvard University they have a they have a thing called project implicit and they offer what they call implicit association tests implicit association would be um, implicit bias unconscious bias it means the same thing and like I've been saying we all have these implicit biases or associations and they are unconscious we don't realize that they're there but these tests just bring them out into the open. So I'm, there's a link for that. There's a link to uh, the, the page for where these tests are in the, in the video description. I'm inviting you, follow that link, find your, find your way there. Um, and this week or a, within the few days after, whenever you watch this video, um, I want you to take the specific there are a number of tests for to expose a number of different implicit associations between a number of things but i this week i'm inviting you to take the race iat there's one labeled race iat i think it's also labeled black white um but there's a whole list of them you'll find it there take that one and any of the other ones so that we can answer that question what is my nazareth who is my nazareth because if we are to follow Jesus, who was one of those people from the other side of the tracks, from the bad side of town, from this place where nothing of value can come from? We follow someone from there. We follow Jesus and our implicit biases against those people get in the way of us following Jesus to those places and to those people from where we can encounter God. So this is a step of discipleship for us, identifying what those biases are so that we can be conscious of them and start working around them. And that's one piece of homework. But second, as I said, Martin Luther King Jr. Day is, uh, as of when I'm posting this, tomorrow, January 18th, 2021. And this week, I want you to read, I want us to read at least one of his writings or sermons. We have all heard the his his I have a dream speech. So that one 
does not count. That one doesn't count. Um, I would suggest letter from Birmingham jail. I'll also drop a, a link in the in this video description uh, to where you can find that online, his letter from Birmingham jail, or one of his later writings that we are not as familiar with, the later writings closer to his assassination, 68, 69, I want to say. Um, don't quote me on that, but one of his later writings closer to his assassination. Um, but I invite us to that, to read some of Dr. King's writings or anything from people of color with Black History Month coming up next month. Anything from people of color. I invite us to do that because our siblings of color and communities of color are often labeled Nazareth. Nothing of value can supposedly come from there. But we encounter God in precisely those places and those people where we imagine, we assume, we are biased that nothing good can supposedly come from there. But that is precisely where we can encounter God. That is precisely where Jesus can be found. So this is a way of following Jesus into those places and to those people so that we can encounter God there. Now, we we all saw the, the insurrection, the attempted coup uh, in D.C. on January 6th. And there, there is more, as, as of, again, as of today, there's more fear of violence around the country between now and Inauguration Day. And there's probably a lot of stuff lying beneath that but a big piece is a white supremacy is a big piece of the energy lying underneath that so as, as i said last week i 100 percent denounce all attempts at insurrection all violence against elected officials i mean th th there is no world in which it is okay to breach the capital to try to overthrow the government or to breach the capital of any state's um, in this run-up to the inauguration day where there are real and credible threats of that happening. But in the face of all of this, we think, what can we do? And those two pieces of homework that I gave us, um, discover your implicit bias with that test and start reading and encountering people of color, Dr. King's writings, and any other people of color. Um, and whatever else your Nazareth might be. That is what we can do. Those are two things that we can do rather easily. So I invite us to be about that work. Because it is in precisely those places that we assume can bring nothing of value to the world, that we assume nothing good can come from there. It is in precisely those places and with those people that we can encounter God. That is where Jesus can be found. So may we be about that work so that we can encounter God. Dear friends, always remember, I love you and Jesus loves you. There's nothing you can do about that. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we said, Amen. Dear friends, grace and peace.